Hello YouTube and welcome to part two. In today's video we are going to create our UI selector class and we're gonna make some methods that we can reference because remember how before we needed to write something like you know we had a driver let's just assume I have a driver and then we had find elements by UI automator something like this and then we had to put in new UI selector and then text and then we had to escape some of it you know in order to perform a click or whatever okay so wouldn't it be nice not to write this part out at all okay so that's what we're gonna do today so let's go ahead and start let's go to our UI selector class and let's create a private variable uh, this variable is gonna hold a string and let's call it uh, locator and this locator is going to be set every time to this value to UI selector okay this is the default value of this locator so it's always gonna start like this now let's go ahead and create a couple of methods to go along with this class and this methods are going to return the same class so we can chain them so I will, you'll see later so we can say public it gonna, it's going to return UI selector and let's do resource ID for example okay. and this resource ID method is going to take a string and have, we'll have a value Okay, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna say locator, we're gonna reference our variable that we made there, and we're gonna say locator, we're gonna reassign a new value to this locator. Okay, so the new value is going to be, can you guess, it's gonna be resource ID. Uh, what is this? Resource ID, and we're also going to escape some of this, and we're going to put our value right in here. Okay, <clears throat> and then we're going to return this. All right, so this is our method, and what this method will do is going to create a string. It's going to take this locator, it's going to start with new UI selector, just like we do here. And then... So we're going to start with new UI selector, and then we say we want to add resource ID. Okay, if we call this resource ID method, so that will do it. So let's just take a look how it looks. Okay, so for example, if we still using the find elements by UI automator from the driver method, we can do we can say new UI selector, and we can say resource ID, and then we can say hello. So this looks much better than the previous example, right? So this is a lot more readable, and it's a lot quicker. Right, because all we have to do is we just have to reference uh, pre-made methods from a class. So it's very consistent as well. <clears throat> so let's just kind of see what happens here. Let's do a sysout print and sysout print the locator. Just to make sure this works, we're actually just going to call that. And just to make sure it works, we get the proper string. Okay, so our string is new UI selector resource ID hello 
Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and do some more methods okay, to cover other things, um, other um, possible properties. Okay, so let's just kind of copy and paste this stuff. Close that. Okay, so let's start at the beginning here, and we're going to have another property called class name. And basically, we can just copy and paste this. It's also going to take a string value in here. Okay. Then we're going to have class name matches. Okay, and this will just basically we can copy and paste that in our thing. And this is actually going to be a regex. Let's just change the value just so when we call this method or reference this method later, we remember that this must be a regex. Um, let's see. So we have text, and then we have text contains and we also can copy and paste this in. Then we have index and index is basically just a value um, like an integer so we don't actually need to escape it so it's not a string. Okay and this can be an int actually. So then moving on we have other properties, secondary properties coming up. So we have clickable. And this is a Boolean property. So we also don't need us to escape it. So we're going to remove this. Actually, I'm going to just remove this. Mm, well, OK, let's actually keep it just for demonstration purposes later on. Um, let's do checked. And this is also a Boolean property. Don't need to escape it. Okay. Then we have enabled. Same thing. Okay. And then we have description. And then we have description contains. And then we have description matches. This is a regex, just so we remember it. <coughs> Let's go ahead and keep going here. So now we also have a next path. Okay. Um, we need to be able to accommodate X path. So we're going to say X path. And it's going to be a string, and this string is going to be X path. Okay. <coughs> and when we return X path, uh, basically, we don't need to reuse the locator that was already pre-made. We actually need to reassign it. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to say locator equals to xpath. <coughs> okay, so we have our methods. Let's go ahead what they do. Um, let's go ahead and see what they do. <coughs> so if we have a bunch of these methods here, let's see if they all return different strings. Okay, for example, hello, um, this is item one, um, item two, Let's 
So all of those guys will return a different string. Let's just make sure it does. Okay. So at the end, we actually get this value. So this is correct. Um, because remember our methods, each and every one of them has a sysout print. So that's why we see when we create a resource, when we um, edit the resource ID, we, we sysout printed this line. And then when we edit the text, we sysout print this line. But it actually works properly. <clears throat> uh, so everything works. Uh, let's go ahead. Now we need to pass this selector to another class. Okay, that's going to handle all the actions on the selectors. Remember, this class is just responsible for compiling like this string for us. So it's easy for us to create selectors. But we need to have a class that's actually going to handle, that's going to perform some actions like clicks, drags, uh, getting text from, uh, from those elements. And that's the UI object. This is the class that's going to do all of that. Okay. Uh, so this class needs to somehow know which selector to perform uh, those actions on, right? So we're going to also make a private <clears throat> uh, string selector. So this is, well, it's a variable. It's going to hold a string. And we're also going to call it locator, okay? And this locator is empty by default, okay? So we are going to create a method. We're going to call it UI object. It's a constructor. Okay, and this constructor is, it must, so when you initiate <clears throat> UI object, you must, you must initiate it with a locator, okay? And basically what we're going to say, we're going to say this locator equals locator. Okay, and that's all we're going to do for this class right now, okay? So we're going to go back to a selector, and we're going to create another method. <clears throat> and this method is going to make our UI object. Okay, so that's exactly what we're going to call it. We're going to say public UI object. So it's going to return a UI object to us. We're going to say make UI object. Okay, and basically we are going to return new UI object with the locator that we created. Okay, so now let's do this. Let's delete all this sysout print and go to our UI object and let's just make one sysout print here and let's do this locator. Out print the value of this locator. So let's go to our runner and in here let's do make UI object. This is the new stuff that we can reference now. So I'm actually going to do it this way. Um, so let's run this method and see what we have. Okay. There we go. Now we successfully created a class that compiles our full string for a selector and it passes it on to a different class. And in the next video, we're going to uh, make some methods inside of UI object class to actually do some stuff on those locators. So make sure guys to like this video, subscribe, and see you in the next video. Take care.